Happy New Year. Who's ready to shake off 2023 with me? I love when the new year comes around because we have the promise of anything being possible as we welcome in the new one. So 2024, kind of blank calendar, empty reading journals, our lists get to be reset and I am ready for it. I'm ready to see if 2024 will live up to the potential that it has. And we are gonna start it off by finding some books for me to read in January. I forgot. Just spin it. It is back to its original form. And I am going to be looking for five books. At least that's the plan. The game may decide to give me more. We will see. So it's really simple. The only thing you should know is if we land on the orange slice, then that means I have to spin for something up top, one of the stars. Also, if it lands between two numbers, I will be going up top. That could potentially add more books to my list. All right, let's just dive right into it and see what my first book for 2024 will be. Are y'all ready? I am I'm so excited. Okay, let's spin. Number 11. Here's hoping I can also be decisive. Wish me luck. Okay, our first prompt is a green one and animal on cover. I'm sure I've got plenty of those, but it's going to take some digging. So, I don't, I don't even know what I'm in the mood for. I'm still really feeling mysteries. They're just so fun. So I'll probably add another one on. Another thing I want to do is I really want to tackle my series this year. So I'm going to try to focus on series that I've already started. We'll see how that plays out. Okay, I have been dying to read this book. And it's got a fox. The very first book of 2024. Part two in the Thursday Murder Club, The Man Who Died Twice by Richard Austin. I cannot wait to read this book and somehow it has just been sitting here collecting dust. So this is it. First one and I decided right away. Such a great start for the new year. Okay, let's start a little pile and replace this and move on. Okay, we are going to replace it with another green one. Uh-oh. Random, oh no, redraw and a plus one. But that's okay, because it's number 11. It could sit there, who knows how long. If you ever watched Bingo Maze, you'll know what I'm talking about, because that number does not like to surface. All right, let's go for the second spin and let's see what I get. it was going to be the star number 24. This is another one that doesn't show up often. Wallflower. Book that's always bypassed for another. I have a lot of those. In fact, I really failed my December TBR. And I think there's some on there that I just keep rolling over. I know there was in November. So I'm going to put some thought into that one and we'll come back to it. Okay, wallflowers. I had, I, I was a little spoiled for choice. There are definitely plenty of books that while I do want to read them, I, my eyes just immediately jump over them. I didn't check my Wheel of Shame because those books I have at least picked out and put on my TBR. So the wallflowers, these are the ones that my eyes don't even register. They just jump right over them and keep going because they're not handsome enough to tempt me. Do you see that? So... I think I found one. This one I always skip right over and it's Witches Steeped in Gold. Beautiful cover and I just read the flap. It sounds really good. For some reason, it just is a blip on my radar. So we have Araya and Jasmine. One is heir to an overthrown kingdom and the other who has stolen magic at her fingertips 
is the daughter of the self-crowned Doyen, so the ones who stole the crown. Araya, the supposed to be heir, is locked up in a cell, and while Jasmine's life is probably better, she is a threat to her mother's rule. So these two are sworn enemies, but they are going to team up to take down the woman who threatens them both, which would be Jasmine's mother. So I am looking forward to this. I don't know why. Uh, I just don't even consider it when I'm building my TBRs. So this will go on there. I'm sure a lot of y'all have read it. If you have, uh, did you like it or not? Let's replace it. We got another green up front, a whole bunch of greens. And it is gonna be a set in other country. A lot of those. All right, third spin, ready? Got this bluish green. Classic. I do like classics. And I don't read them nearly as often as I should. Okay. Okay, I am definitely choosing a undisputed classic. And that is King Lear by Shakespeare. It's been a very long time since I read the original play seen tons of adaptations from it and I'm looking forward to reading the original work along with the translation into modern time that No Fear Shakespeare puts out. I love these. I haven't talked about them in a while. One side of the page you have the original play and on the next you have a modern translation explanation for all of the slang and everything which really makes Shakespeare accessible and half the fun of it for me is trying to, you know, make sure that their translation is on. I, I like going back and seeing, okay, how did they get that? And then, ah, I see. Uh, anyway, King Lear definitely fits the classic prompt. Start out 2024 with some culture. I will feel very accomplished when I finish that one. In fact, I'll feel accomplished when I finish, which is a seeped in gold too. Let's replace that with our last green one, Illustrated. Old 43 Cemetery Road, Harry Potter's Illustrated. Lots of possibilities for that one. Okay, we're up to the fourth spin already. By the way, if you're enjoying this, hit me a little thumbs up or even better yet, subscribe so you can check it out next month. You know, let's let YouTube know that I am over here in the, in the corner. Okay, let's go for the fourth spin. I was gonna get it. Number three. Green. Location and title. I like the title ones. They're fun. I wavered back and forth trying to decide if I was gonna pick a city name. You know, all I had so many options. Paris kept coming up and up and up. But I decided to go with a Longbourn. Longbourn's Unexpected Matchmaker. This is that Pride and Prejudice retelling. So in this one, we are obviously in England. Longbourn is the Bennett household. And there is a matchmaker working behind the scenes to bring Darcy and Elizabeth together. And I, I've read this before and I remember really loving it. In this variation, Colonel Fitzwilliam accompanies Mr. Darcy and Mr. Bingley to Netherfield. So he is there from the very beginning. And Mr. Darcy makes friends with a mysterious member of the Meriton neighborhood who refuses an introduction, but who has a close relationship with the Bennett household. And that person is going to be working behind the scenes to bring Darcy and Elizabeth together. So they're all gonna be there. Wickham, Lady Catherine, Caroline, and I think everything happens within Netherfield and Longbourn. It's been a very long time since I've read it, and I am looking forward to rereading this one. All right. Yay, I'm going to have some time with the Darcys. I am currently reading A Christmas at Pemberley, so it'll be nice to 
continue with that family. All right, Could, yeah, because we haven't quite made it to the end of the year yet. It, it'll be close. And we will replace that with Too Faced, two or more point of view, points of view. There we go. We're already on the last spin. This is going too quick. Ready? Number three. Isn't that what we just put up? Two Face, two or more POVs. I know I have a couple of Christina Lauren's I haven't read yet. I like her. Well, honestly, they've been a little hit and miss. Okay, that took a lot. I was counting the Christina Lauren, but the two that I have are not dual POVs. Go figure. But I, I found one, and I think this is the last one I own, and this is Kiss the Girl by Zordea Cordova. Hope I pronounced that right. This is part three in the Meant to Be series. These are retellings of Disney classics for adults and we've got kiss the girl this is a retelling of ariel the little mermaid but she is a pop singer and he is a, a musician so it's supposed to be the little mermaid meets daisy jones and the six which i have not read by the way and i have lots of adorable banter and undeniable chemistry so ariel with her sisters has been pop culture phenomenon since they were kids their band is Siren 7. On stage, wearing her iconic red wig and sequin costumes is where she shines. But lately, she wants more. Against her father's wishes, the head of Atlantica Records, Ariel sneaks off as an anonymous merch girl on the summer tour of the up-and-coming band, fronted by dreamy lead singer Eric Reyes. Without her wig and stage makeup, she's unrecognizable, of course. <laughs> free to be a part of the real world on her own terms. So I am looking forward to this and it is dual POV. We start with Ariel's point of view and then we flop to Eric's and back and forth. This is also multimedia. We've got some text messages and there's some letters. I think we've got some of these and I guess news bulletins. So uh, this will be fun. I've actually been really looking forward to this. This is part three in the series. Uh, the first two I really loved, which was If the Shoe Fits. And the second one was By the Book. They all are written by different authors, though. So. I'm going to have to find some more dual POVs. If y'all know of any that are good, let me know, please, down in the comments. Because that's one of my favorites. I love getting the, the opposite point of view. Okay, I should just stop there. But where's the fun in that? I, I want another one. So let's replace that and do one more spin. We'll get the sunny yellow up there. Short book, under 200 pages. I wouldn't mind if I get three again. By the way, I do have plans to play The Sims. So keep an eye out for that. That should be the next one up. And we'll be resetting Bingo Maze. Okay, this is the last one, I promise. Number two, we get newest purchase. I see that was just beyond perfect, except everything I've bought has been a, it'll be a Christmas book. I don't know how I feel about that. Let me see what the last one was. Check my reading journal. By the way, a video will come up at some point showing you how this one closed out. And I will also do one with my new reading journal once I finish setting it up. So I got Christmas, Christmas, and then I, I did buy some non-Christmas books in the middle of December. So I, I think I know. I'm going to go with the bookshop on the corner. So this was recommended to me by the lady at Barnes and Noble. And I think I also bought the Christmas version. There's a Christmas spinoff of this series. 
And this one's set in Scotland. She uh, is a literary matchmaker. I believe she runs like a mobile library, either on like a bicycle or a trailer or something like that, going from around the, the village, the neighborhood in Scotland, matching up the perfect book with the perfect patron. And I think it also, you know, helps them with life. So I am really looking forward to this one. Whoa, <laughs> that was close. It's actually a really good varied stack. We've got a mystery, fantasy, a classic, historical fiction, a rom-com, and I think this one might be, I don't know if this is just contemporary. So great way to start 2024. That was really quick and I, I love it. I love this game still, even though I've been playing it for so long. Like I mentioned earlier, I will be playing The Sims this month and we're going to start a whole new round of Bingo Maze, which means all of the numbers will be back on the board and I've got, I'm going to be adding new prompts to that. We're also going to have some blank spots, so I cannot wait to play that. And I have a little something else up my sleeve, something new that we're going to do. Well, I'll be doing it, but it's going to require y'all's help. So keep an eye out for that. And of course, we've got our buddy raid coming up. So it's going to be a great start for 2024. And I'm ready to dive in. All right. I hope to see y'all in just a couple of days with The Sims. Have a great one. Bye.